In this part of the program, I want to talk to you about how to find the prime factorization of a number. Let's say you were given a problem that asks you to find the prime factorization of the following number, and they ask you to find the prime factorization of 45. The first thing you would want to do is draw two lines diagonal that connect at one point to form a little symbol similar to what a caret looks like. The reason you do this is because what you're doing when you do prime factorization is making a factor tree for whatever number you're working with. And right now we're working with 45, so this is going to be a factor tree of the number 45. The caret is referred to as branches since it's a factor tree. At the bottom of the factor tree of the branches, you're going to want to put two factors that you can multiply together to get a product of the number you're working with. So in this example, I want to use two factors that I multiply together to get 45. To do this, I would have to remember all of the factors of 45. They are 1 and 45, 3 times 15, 5 times 9. When I'm doing prime factorization, I cannot use the factors of whatever number I'm working with that include 1. The reason being is because prime factorization is a process to find all of the prime factors of whatever number you're working with. 1 is not a prime number. It's also not a composite number. That is why I can't use it in my prime factorization. So for my example, I'm left with either using 3 and 15 for my factors or 5 and 9 for my factors. It doesn't make a difference which factors you start with. Your end result will always be the same if you did the factorization correctly. So I'm going to decide uh, and use 5 and 9 for my example. So I would put a 5 on one side and 9 on the other side because 5 times 9 is 45. The next step in factorization is determining whether the factors you selected are prime or composite. If you forgot what prime and composite means, look back to investigation one on prime and composite. I know from my work in investigation one that five is a prime number because the only factors it has are one and five. So I'm going to go ahead and circle it. 9 is not a prime number. Because it's not a prime number, I'm now going to go ahead and draw branches under it. And on these branches, I need to put factors that multiply together to give me 9. So I think of what my factors of 9 are. I know 1 times 9 is 9, 3 times 3 is 9. Again, I can't use the factor pair 1 and 9, so my only option is to use 3 times 3. So at the bottom of my branches, I'm going to put 3 and 3. Now again, I have to decide, is 3 a prime number? And I know from my work in Investigation 1 that 3 is prime because its only factors are 1 and 3. So I could go ahead and circle both numbers. So I'll circle the 3, and I will circle the other 3. If you look in my factor tree, I don't have any more numbers that have branches to continue. So this means that I am done. Since I've reached the end of all my branches, the next step is to write a product of my prime factors. And a good practice to use is listing them in order from least to greatest. So my product of prime factors is going to be 3 times 3 times 5, which is the three numbers that I circled. The last thing you want to do before you complete this prime factorization is make sure that what you wrote for your product of your primes does give you a product of the number you're working with. So if I did this correctly, when I multiply 3 times 3 times 5, I have to get 45. So if I use my order of operations rule, it tells me to do 3 times 3 first. And when I do 3 times 3, I know that 3 times 3 equals 9. So I'm going to write that here to remind myself that I already did this. Next, I'm going to take this 9, which was my product of the first part of this, and multiply it by the 5. I know that 9 times 5 does equal 45, so I did do my factorization correctly. 
So I hope this helps you to find the prime factorization of a number. Good luck. If you need to, watch it again and then give it a shot.